Um, that guy had been in a race car in 17 months, so hats off to him for the super sub, I guess, as they're calling him. That, that was pretty cool to see. In preparation for Las Vegas, though, I want to check out the playoff points. Check it out. Let's see what we have here. What stands out to you when you look at this? These guys over here are in red because these are the only guys that if we see a winner out of these 12, it could shake things up for them, bump one of them out. But besides you sitting pretty at number four, what stands out to you here? Uh, there's a couple of things that are very interesting to me. Um, obviously, I see this 24-point number by Allgaier and Christopher Bell. You know, the Cup Series has the, the big three. At this time, it's the big two and those guys as far as playoff points. They're... Um, barring some kind of catastrophe, they're in good shape to go straight to Homestead if they if they just stay on the path they are. Um, it, it's incredible to see those many points get racked up over the regular season. And, you know, we picked up an extra point that tied us and Elliott Sadler as of right now into the last race as far as playoff points. And then I think the most uh, interesting dynamic for me also is is look at these two guys right here, Ross Chastain and Austin Sendrick. He's in a 22 car this week, Penske car. Really, really fast, has won at Vegas in the past here recently, as well as Ross Chastain. That car won the spring race in Vegas, and he knows he's trying to take advantage of an incredible opportunity. And those two guys are going to be in really good race cars with a shot to win the race. And I know that I'm going to be racing them. It's cool to see Ross get the opportunity he is. Those are two wild cards that everybody's got to pay attention to. Good stuff to note when watching the races this weekend. Well, speaking of the races this weekend, you had a pretty good run at Vegas earlier this season, finished sixth. How confident are you heading into this weekend? I'm super pumped about Vegas. Um, you know, probably dating back to the last year I drove for Brad Kozlowski racing. Uh, I think we ran second to my teammate Tyler Reddick out there, and something clicked that that racetrack kind of lended to me of what I really knew I needed to have. Um, and then transitioning into the Xfinity cars, I feel like I've had a good knack of knowing what I wanted the race car to do. And it's, it's a challenge to achieve that feel in the heat that we're going to experience. But you know, being the, the home race for, for my sponsor, South Point Hotel and Casino, the Gone family who have had a huge tradition in motorsports, and we get all those folks there. Um, they're the presenting sponsor of the Cup Race, so it's incredible to have all those things and all that stuff kind of, honestly, weigh on your shoulders. Meaning they're lifting you up. They want to see you do good. We want to do a good job for them. And um, our mile and a half program, RCR, over the last month, I think, has really taken a stride in the right direction. And we got to show some of that at Kentucky with leading laps and thought we had a good shot to win the race and just fell, I think, one or two spots short. But haven't really got to show people what we've done in preparation. So um, this will be the kind of telltale sign, and we hopefully kick it off with a lot of momentum and be no better place to get the first win. Could be a great weekend for you guys in victory lane, especially like you said, you're from here in Charlotte, but it's almost like a home race for you with all of the sponsor family and everyone there lifting you up. Should be a good weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. I, I've always said that I never thought Vegas would feel like a home, but it definitely does, and thanks to everybody there that makes it feel that way. So it's a cool vibe, cool, cool feeling, and with all the weather we're having in North Carolina this coming week, we may be out there for a couple more days and take advantage of it. Yeah, not a, not a bad place to be stuck, I'd say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, from a driver's standpoint, though, getting ready to take on this track, what is the what are the biggest challenges that you face at Vegas? So anytime you're out, you know, in that area of the country, um, the racetrack has a, a kind of a, a sandy feel to it. And um, it's really slick when practice starts with the sand. You can see rooster tails flying off people's cars, sand flying around. Then the racetrack goes through a big, big transition with heat. And with the, the temperatures going to be as high as they are, we got to prepare for not only is our, what's our race car going to do on lap 5, what's it going to do on lap 10, 15, 20, and further into the run. Because for whatever reason, the asphalt in Vegas, it always seems to magnify, you know, if it's a two-to-one ratio of how your race car goes through a change at any other racetrack, it's like double that at Vegas. So a lot of elements we're going to have to overcome. Uh, your race car has got to be able to get through turn one and two with a lot of corner speed. It's really rough at that end of the racetrack. So that makes a huge challenge for the race team and the drivers to navigate and figure out how they can make their car get through there as best as possible. And I um, thought we did a, an okay job of that in the spring, but I think we've done the things to prepare for that to be a little better this time. We also asked uh, Kyle Busch his uh, opinion on taking on Las Vegas, and he took a few laps in our NASCAR Heat 2 simulator to show us his tips and tricks for this track. Here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, this is my home track. This is one of my favorite racetracks to go to on the NASCAR schedule. Big speed down the front straightaway here. You kind of want to roll out of the gas, use a little bit of brake. There's some bumps there in turn one. You got the billboards with the sun that kind of disrupts your vision a little bit. Come off of turn two, nice and smooth, down the back stretch. Good speed down the back stretch here. You want to have a real nice smooth arc getting down to the bottom of the racetrack in three and four. I'm kind of running the middle line here, getting a big run up off the corner, making sure that I got a big speed for the front stretch. 
and bring back a good lap time to the start finish line. Well, Daniel, per usual, there is a lot of racing this weekend. So let's check out the weekend schedule and get right into it. Starting the action on Thursday with a little dirt track racing. The K&N Pro Series West is taking on the dirt track at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the first time. And on Friday at Las Vegas, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, the second race of the playoffs for the trucks. And the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series is kicking off their playoffs in Germany on Saturday. Also on Saturday in Las Vegas, the final race of the regular season for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Finally going to see who uh, takes home that regular season trophy. Should be a good one. The ARCA Series is also in action on Saturday in Indiana. And wrapping up the weekend, the second race of the Wheel and Euro Series playoffs and the start of the playoffs for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series in Las Vegas. Daniel, it's been great having you on the show today. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to come chat. Absolutely. Happy to be here, and I will definitely be at that dirt race. Yes. Uh, Vegas. That's going to be cool to see. I'm pumped by that. Yeah, it should be a good one. And uh, I'll be watching you this weekend. should be a fun uh, fun time for you, like you said. Almost a home race, and we'll be rooting for you here. Thank you. Thank you. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Jesse Punch here with Daniel Hemrick. We'll see you at the track. Get the best of DTA channels and internet content on your TV. Presenting Airtel Internet TV. Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by Fog Fog Body Spray ye jaldi se udega nahi rahega and co-presented by My Team 11 create your own team and win big on myteam11.com the indian fitness league will present to you the final battle to become the fittest boy and the fittest girl of india it will be a restless moment for the team Delhi Dynamites, whose five players will now compete against each other. In the final episode, one fitness icon will meet the legend of fitness himself, Sunil Shetty. IFL, the toughest, the fittest. This Saturday, 4 p.m. on D-Sport. Matt Taven and the Kingdom made a vicious statement over the world champion. What will they have to say this week and in the main event? Four tag teams collide, showcasing the best tag team division in wrestling today. Don't miss Ring of Honor this week. Hello everyone, welcome to another NASCAR U. I'm Jesse Punch. Today we're here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we're gonna be learning about the evolution of the stock car. Look at Red Byron's car behind me, the 1949 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion. Looks a little different than the cars you see on the track today. No surprise that we've come an incredibly long way since the start of the sport. So today, let's take a walk through time and learn more about how the shape of the cars have shaped our sport. This is Kevin. He's the director of exhibits here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and he's going to take us on a walk down Glory Road. That's right. Here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame, we have this sweeping exhibit that takes us really through the whole history of stock car racing. And one of the great things that we're able to show here is really the different changes in technology and what does it mean to be a stock car in NASCAR competition. And one of the earliest cars we have here is Fireball Roberts 1957 Ford. And what's great is it really shows that the cars in the 1950s that were competing in NASCAR are really straight from the showroom stock. At the most, they took some things off. Maybe they would take off the headlights that there isn't broken glass and different things like that. But for the most part, this is a car that you would go into a dealership and buy. They would add some safety with the roll cage. They would take some things out. But pretty much, this is the type of car that you would buy in 1957. It starts to change a little bit more in the 1960s. And here we have a great example of Richard Petty's 1964 Plymouth. Car manufacturing methodologies change. in an 
order to handle the high speeds of now the super speedways that were being built, more and more of the frame of the car, which is the part underneath the car, had to be custom built and beefed up. So although this